Thank you. Uh, my name is Paweł Jakubczyk, and uh, I would like to talk about the amplitude fluctuations in the berezinski costelli staules uh, phase. I listed all the relevant collaborations. Uh, okay, how do I... Uh, uh, oh, here. So, okay, different people were inv involved at different, well, kind of calculations, so I will try to make it clear who, uh, who contributed to what during the talk. So as an introduction, let me recall the mermin wagner theorem, which tells us that uh, no spontaneous breaking of continuous symmetries is possible in two dimensions and below at finite temperatures. And I will be focusing on two dimensions. So this theorem implies that in two dimensions, it's not, not possible to have true long range uh, order. There is a special situation where the symmetry of relevance is U1, where despite the absence of long range order, one may actually have a phase which is characterized by an algebraic decay of order parameter correlations and finite order parameter uh, stiffness. And this is the uh, so called Berzinski Costelli Stauless uh, phase. On the other hand, at sufficiently large temperatures, one expects the usual uh, behavior where the, ex the um, correlations decay. Uh, exponentially. And these two are separated by a very peculiar phase transition, which is the berzinski costelli staules transition. And the special features are, at least some are listed here. So, okay, this is, this is uh, described as a transition driven by topological excitations of the vortex type. The free energy is a smooth function of the pa parameters. The stiffness uh, uh, exhibits a universal jump. And if you look at the singularity of the correlation length approaching the transition from high temperatures, you find that this is characterized by a singularity which is stronger than any power law. So an essential singularity. So the standard, uh, okay, I should mention that I will, for most of the talk, I will not talk about the, 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 the transition itself, except for the last part. I will focus on the, uh, on the, um, uh, low temperature phase, and in particular, uh, the role of the amplitude fluctuation uh, or longitudinal fluctuations in this, in this phase, which means I will focus on the temperature range which is uh, sufficiently uh, low. <clears throat> so in this regime, it is commonly accepted that the effective, well, the relevant excitations of the system are spin waves and that it can be described uh, uh, in the terms of just, well, an effective Hamiltonian for phase fluctuations, this is kind of spin wave type, and the vortices are become relevant only sufficiently high in temperature. And the standard approach, the kind of textbook approach, tells us that the amplitude fluctuations are, are not relevant. And this is the, the point which I, I want to, well, elaborate on within the context of functional uh, RG. So it's not the first uh, work, of course, so I, I listed all the relevant uh, works which I know, which uh, deal with the berzinski costelis taules systems uh, from the functional RG perspective and the setup which is provided by a, uh, by a phi, phi to the four type model, which is just O2 O2 theory in two dimensions. So the, the, the most relevant paper for me at this point is this, is this first one, which is already 20 years old, more than 20 years old, and uh, well, the last contribution which I listed here is, is a sort of refinement or uh, a revi well, um, kind of uh, rediscussion of this paper, and I, I think we provided a little bit of uh, analytical understanding of this, of this context. So this, uh, these three papers deal with uh, more uh, computational approaches, which is the derivative expansion. <coughs> So what I want to emphasize is that these four contributions all have a common feature. So the vortices are for, well, rather clear reasons not captured, which is, uh, well, which is a bit unlike the standard uh, treatment where they are believed to be actually re the relevant uh, factor driving the transition. On the other hand, the amplitude fluctuations are kept while they are usually supposed to be like irrelevant in the, 
uh, and the um, standard treatment. So the aim of this, uh, of this work done together with Walter Metzner is to carefully uh, examine the role of the amplitude hmm. mode. There is a motivation behind this. So we are aware that in many systems, uh, uh, for example, in the context of interacting Bose gas, but not only, the, uh, due to the coupling between the, the longitudinal and uh, radio uh, and transverse modes, the amplitude mass is actually renormalized. At it, in certain cases, it may attain the zero uh, value. And this happens, for example, uh, in the ground state superfluid uh, uh, in the interacting with the gas, <coughs> as is uh, well established. So we wanted to, to carefully re-examine this kind of effects uh, in the case of, uh, of this particular system of D2 and N2. Uh, N2. Uh, so for the present purposes, it is perfectly sufficient to, to, to focus on the phi to the fourth theory, which has just a quartic coupling, uh, an order parameter expectation value, and a Z factor. Uh, and this is the initial action. And we are always splitting the, uh, the order parameter field in this, in this kind of linear basis. So we have uh, this sigma mode, which is the longitudinal, and the transverse mode, which is denoted with pi. So this radial or amplitude or uh, longitudinal mode is, has this reputation of being rather irrelevant or innocent, and we are looking at the validity of this assumption within FR FRG. So first we, uh, okay, I, I have the framework here, but I will not talk much about it. So uh, the, 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 the formalism we use, use is based on Vettri uh, equation, and uh, well, we use two, two truncations. So for most of the talk, I will talk about the most simple, uh, or almost most, more, most simple uh, approximation, which, which just builds a vertex expansion on top of the derivative expansion and parameterizes the flowing effective action using these four uh, couplings. Uh, this is very similar to what was done uh, by Grete and Wetterich in 1995. On the other hand, the, the, the other calculation, uh, which I will present in the last two slides, uh, uses the full uh, uh, derivative expansion at, uh, at second order. But this is a, more like a computational thing, so. Uh, I want to focus on this uh, first of all. <clears throat> so the flow equations, uh, okay, so this kind of parameterization allows us to project the Vettri equation onto a set of either th uh, three uh, coupled uh, partial differential equations, Well, in this case we obtain a, a set of, uh, for just flowing couplings, uh, which can be studied to some extent also analytically, while well, here one, is, one must uh, just resort to numerical uh, uh, solutions. <clears throat> so we start off by uh, reproducing the low temperature phase. As I said, we are now focusing on the low temperature phase. The vortices are uh, irrelevant. We take these four equations. Now we follow the, the standard uh, kind of approach. We use the textbook uh, and say, okay, the amplitude mode is not relevant. So in the flow equations that we have here, we just drop all the amplitude fluctuations, which means we drop all the terms which contain some massive uh, propagators. And this uh, significantly uh, simplifies the problem so that we can then study the, these two equations which are coupled, but still we can solve them for almost arbitrary cutoff in the infrared, and the solution is here. So in agreement with the mervin wagner theorem, the order parameter vanishes, and the vanishing is governed by the anomalous dimension. On the other hand, the Z, uh, uh, Z factor diverges with the same exponent, and it all happens in such a way that the stiffness, which is just this product, uh, attains the fixed point. And we can uh, read off the value of the eta exponent, which fully agrees uh, with the standard costalis tauless uh, formula. So this is the, a way of uh, just reproducing the line of fixed points in the low temperature phase. 
Very simple, just take these equations and forget some terms on the right hand side. Uh, okay, but we have dropped some terms, this, namely those, those amplitude or longitudinal modes, and then we want to ask about the consistency of this uh, calculation. So we go back to the, uh, to the full set of equations, sorry, and we now look at the flow of the coupling, uh, sorry, of the, of, the, of the mass, of the longitudinal mass, just assuming that this kind of scaling uh, holds. So what we find is that, uh, is that, well, this kind of power counting leads us to the conclusion that the mass will scale according to this power, which says that, okay, the, actually the longitudinal mode is not really less relevant uh, as compared to the Goldstone mode, but it's equally relevant, of course, if, provided we are uh, deep in the infrared. In the initial stages of the flow, this is all, uh, well, mm, well, the mass is finite, so, so the amplitude mode is really suppressed. So this leads us to a, a kind of puzzling conclusion that the phase and amplitude, or perhaps I should rather say longitudinal and transverse modes, are equally relevant in the low energy, uh, well, uh, limit. And then it may suggest that the justification for dropping this amplitude mode is not quite strong. <clears throat> so we go back to the equations, and now we solve the full flow, I mean, including the, the amplitude uh, mode. So we look at the feedback of this, you know, softened uh, um, uh, um, longitudinal mode uh, on the, on the uh, quasi-long-range uh, order, which, uh, and on the stiffness in particular. So we find, and this was also observed in, in the first paper many years ago, that the fixed point is not really stable, uh, but in, instead acquires a very weak, uh, well, logarithmic flow. So this, uh, and this leads to the ultimate collapse uh, of the quasi-long-range order, even if this occurs at very, very low energy uh, scale. So this plot here demonstrates the, the collapse, the, sorry, the, the vanishing of the, of the uh, longitudinal mass. And on the other hand, I also plot here the, the stiffness and the anomalous exponent. So you see, if, if, I, if I just keep the, uh, the Goldstone fluctuations, I, I, I obtain a kind of line of fixed points here, but due to the pr presence of the amplitude mode, uh, well, this, this whole thing ultimately, well, these this fixed points here are not really fixed points, but are shifted, and this whole thing always collapses in the, uh, in the uh, high temperature uh, phase. And, okay, this is, this is should be emphasized that this amplitude mode is not contained in the standard BKT theory, but, well, so to get the BKT theory, you should just put vortices on top of the spin waves. So instead of having the amplitude here, you should add vortices, and this would lead to the usual uh, uh, costly starless phase. Well, here we have just something, something different. <clears throat> so this raises the natural question of the, well, stability of the um, costly starless phase in realistic systems with respect to this uh, kind of amplitude uh, fluctuations. <clears throat> so I, I should move on, but no. Oh. Okay, so the, this is a plot demonstrating the behavior of the correlation length. So the correlation length, since there's no transition, must be finite. But in this calculation, we can, uh, we can just find the its behavior in low temperatures. So you find that this is enormously large, uh, well, at, at temperatures sufficiently low. So for any practical purposes, you can, take, you can just uh, approximate by, by, uh, by just infinity, below some, some temperature which should be somehow associated to what is uh, described typically as a costally starless mm, temperature. So this is the summarizing picture of this calculation. So as I said, the, well, due to the interactions of the, these two modes, the, the longitudinal mode becomes softened. So this, its relevance is actually not any lower than the relevance of the pi mode, 
which fits back on uh, which fits back on the uh, uh, on the stiffness and leads to the collapse of the quasi long range order at any finite temperature, even if at very very uh, low uh, scales. So instead of the uh, uh, instead of the true transition, we we obtain a very sharp uh, crossover. <coughs> so. I, I'd like to emphasize that this all relies on the presence of the amplitude mode in the system. And as far as we uh, understood and we looked at it with, with a bit of care, so it does not contradict any result that would be like rigorously uh, uh, established in more mathematical or mathematical physics uh, literature. So now I move on to the other calculation, which is very natural to, uh, to, to do and also leads to uh, a well, it, its own picture of the transition. So now we just parameterize the, uh, the effective action with this most general form, which has terms of order at most Q squared in the momentum representation. So similar uh, uh, calculation was done also kind of long ago by Gustav and Vettery and uh, uh, yeah, so this, I, I have to say that, okay, here, uh, this is the numerical calculation, so the analytical understanding is, uh, is a bit uh, limited. And the pictures that we find, uh, and, and also that, well, for technical reasons, it's not possible to do this at very low temperatures. This is related to the singularity encountered uh, in the flow. So we, we, are, we are actually, the picture that we are obtaining here is is a bit similar, but also has differences as compared to the the one I presented below, uh, before. So the the presence of these quasi plateaus is just an omnipresent uh, features, and we find that okay, the kind of true BKT well behavior cannot be restored at any order in in phi, but if we use the degree of freedom which is provided by the regulator, then this is possible to, to perform a procedure where we just fix temperature and then scan the regulator space in such a way that we obtain a true fixed point. Then we shift the temperature and then we again look for such a regulator that the fixed point is, uh, the true, really true fixed point is, is attained at the end of the flow. So this procedure leads us to the conclusion that this, this is possible only for sufficiently low temperatures. So uh, if, we are, if we are above some temperature which we identify here with the true costly stalless transition, then we are not able to find any regulator. Of course, we are searching in some restricted uh, family that would lead us to the, to the, uh, to the fixed point. And quite strikingly, the, the, the the numerical values of the eta exponent, also of the uh, uh, stiffness, uh, phase stiffness jump, is, is very close to the, to the standard costly stalless theory. So for eta, we obtained like 0 0.24, and the rho s jump was also very close to, uh, to, the, to the standard value, which is 2 over pi. <clears throat> so on the other hand, if we, if we insist on working with a fixed regulator, it's never possible to, to get a line of fixed point. And depending on the, 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 the choice we make, we either end up with just one fixed point or, or just a, a very similar picture to the one we had uh, in, uh, in this uh, low temperature like so, uh, calculation where we just get the quasi plateaus uh, uh, and that's it. <clears throat> so that's, uh, that's the that's the summary. So I want to somehow uh, emphasize, for, first of all, that okay, this, this FRG framework provides, if, if you are just interested in recovering the costless stalless behavior. So this is possible both in the low temperature phase, and this is very simple. Just forget about, close the eyes and, and forget about this amplitude mode, then this gives the perfect kind of picture. On the other hand, if you want to, uh, to get the, uh, the behavior of the, uh, in the transition region, uh, then you have to use this, this full derivative expansion with a somewhat na a natural, perhaps, uh, procedure which uh, just uh, well, enforces the fixed point by, by, by tuning the regulator. 
And this gives a very accurate, well, agreement of the numbers, even though the mechanism that drives the transition is just completely different uh, in this calculation and in the, uh, in the standard uh, theory. So this, this of course, uh, suggests, uh, well, kind of rejection of the <laughs> costal distalis uh, theory uh, at all, and somehow uh, looking at the, uh, well, the possibility that, okay, this amplitude mode is, uh, is the a factor which, which truly uh, destabilizes this, uh, this phase, but this, this, this can be treated as, as a, well, just hypothesis which really would require more, uh, more kind of careful uh, treatment. So I think that's, uh, have I still time? Uh, you are still four minutes, including the time for discussion. Ah, four minutes, including discussion. Yes. Ah, so it's, uh, it's okay. So then I, we can discuss. Yeah, so thank you very much.